with all of these, we're always going to start with a couple of like statements. Uh, and in this case, we're going to start with f at x equals p at x plus q at x because it's the sum. And if you look back at what we did yesterday, the application of this, it, it makes sense. It would be like if it was 2x cubed plus 4x squared, right? That would be your p and your q. And we always have to say p and q are differentiable. So in a formal process, in a formal proof, that line has to be the opening line. It has to be there at some point. You have to say the different parts you're using are differentiable when this comes up on a quiz or a test or something like that. Okay? The sum one is one of the ones that we often would ask you to prove. It's do, some of them are kind of too hard, so we, we wouldn't ask you to do that. But the sum one is a good straightforward one. And again, we always, the, after that first line that we've defined our function and we've stated all the other extra statements that we need to, then we f prime at x equals the limit as h approaches 0. We just write the formula f at x plus h minus f at x all over h. And this is where I would then say, Spend some time when you're thinking about this to really make sure you understand how the next step is just a use of function notation. In fact, I'm going to do an example. If I have f at x equals x squared plus x, and then I do f at 2, what do I do? I take the 2 and I put it in to the two brackets, right? So that's all we're doing in the next step. But it looks weird because we're subbing functions into functions. So whatever is in for x, and I sub it in to both parts in f. So in this case, it's going to look like p at x plus h plus q at x plus h minus, what is f at x? f at x is p at x plus q at x. And that has to be in brackets because you're subtracting the whole thing. You make that mistake, the rest of it's not going to work. So brackets. We're good so far? Again, that's an important step. You got to remember to do the opening. You got to know what it looks like. You got to memorize a little bit of this so you know that that's important. Then you write the formula. This step is going to set you off on the right track if you can do it correctly. What do you think we're going to do next? Seema? Expand the bracket with the negative, right? Very good. Distribute that negative. I don't know what else we could do. Now, this one's a little bit trickier, but I'm going to put it out there to you. What does your intuition say you might do, you could do next? Because it's interesting to me in these circumstances that you try to have an intuition and then reflect on whether or not it was correct. And if it's not correct, you're like, okay, yep, be careful of that. And i got to make sure I don't just go with my intuition on a test. But if it is correct, then that's a good reflection. Bang, did you have a thought? Anybody have any thoughts? Yeah, very, okay, you're two steps ahead, but that's very good. That's exactly what we're going to do is we're going to just regroup P's together and regroup Q's together. So I, you could do the next two steps together as one, but I'm going to do it as two since it's the first time we're seeing it. So this is P at X plus H minus P at X plus Q at X plus H minus Q at X. And then we're going to do this trick, and this is just a fraction thing, where you get p at x plus h 
minus p at x over h and q at x plus h minus q at x all over h. And if I look at the line above, it's the limit of a single fraction, so that's fine. But if I have a limit of a sum or something, this has to be in brackets, right? So I know where the limit statement ends. Because you can have the limit of something plus something else. You don't see that very much, but you can. You would if you, can, if you pursued mathematics further. So you need brackets at that step. What do you notice that's in those brackets? What do those brackets look like? We did this before. It's similar to the proofs yesterday. P at x plus h minus p at x over h, doesn't that look like that? That has f's, but instead it's got p's. But we're not quite there yet. We have a little bit of extra work to do before we can start making those statements. And this is what some people might think. Oh, I'll distribute the limit statement. Whoa, what? <laughs> That's not something that can be distributed. So now our next step's going to look like that, but for a different reason. This is not like a 2 out front of a bracket. But it turns out, because of limit property number four, which states the limit of the sum of two functions is equal to the sum of the limit as x approaches a of each individual function. The limit of the sum is equal to the sum of the limits. Limit property four. You could memorize that it's with limit property four, but you should think about what that means. Oops, make sure you understand that. So that means I can write this. The limit as h approaches 0 of p at x plus h minus p at x over h plus the limit as h approaches 0 of q at x plus h minus q at x all over h. But you have to state this is because of Limit property number four on our list. Limit property number four is not a universal term for that. You can't go to university and say because of limit property four. <laughs> They're not going to know what you're talking about. But we have a little piece of paper that says that has the list of the limit properties. Okay? And I'll share that piece of paper with you on the quiz or the test. You'll have access to it. Any questions? We're not quite done, but we're almost done. So what is this? This is the derivative of p. And what is this? This is the derivative of q. Again, it's very useful to know what the final line should look like. You got to know what the rule is you're trying to prove. That's going to help you make sure you get to the final step. And then we make a final statement. Therefore, if f at x equals p at x plus q at x, we already stated above p and q are differentiable, so we don't have to state that again. Then f prime equals p prime plus q prime. And this is the thing that we've been already using for a couple of days now. It um, allows us to take the derivative of a polynomial that is the sum of several terms. So again, you can go try the difference rule. It's very similar. It has like one or two steps that are just slightly different, but it's the same concept, same idea. And if you can work your way through it, I think that's really good place to be at.